All right, welcome to today's free webinar. I'm so glad that you all could join me. My name is Lisa Calm and I am the author and owner of Top Score Writing. This webinar is specifically to teach you how to keep writing simple. And this is simple for not only students, but teachers as well. And I wanna share with you the way that Top Score Writing teaches writing because it truly is the easiest way to teach writing and to get all of your students writing an essay in no time. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, my name is Lisa Collum. I am the owner and author of Top Score Writing. For those of you that may not know me, I started teaching about 17 years ago. I was fourth grade teacher at a Title I school and I was kind of thrown into teaching writing. We were departmentalized and I was in charge of all of fourth grade writing at the time. And my first question was, where's the curriculum? Because I just wanted to start planning and studying. And my principal at the time said, oh, there's no curriculum for writing. And I was a little um, shocked because there was, there was curriculum for reading, math, social studies, but nothing for writing. So I went on the hunt for some curriculum I was not able to find any daily writing curriculum, um, especially writing curriculum that was structured and would teach the students all the parts of an essay. So I kind of went off what I knew, how I learned how to write. I knew I was with students that were below grade level. I knew I was with students that were not at the, the right reading level. So I knew that I had to break down writing. I knew I needed lots of practice and repetition. And that's how I came up with my system of teaching writing, which after teaching for 10 years, um, turned into my business, which is now top score writing. So now um, almost 20 years later, I work with thousands of schools across the entire nation. And I just wanted this webinar just to simply give you tools and resources that you could use tomorrow if you're still teaching um, or if you're out for summer break, things that you can start planning for next school year. So let's go ahead and jump into the webinar. Um, first, I always like to start with data because I don't want you to think I'm just talking out of one side of my mouth and I don't have any thing to back up that what I'm about to show you works. I really want you to see that the top score writing program works. These are just a few schools from their state assessments. Um, this, the orange bars are before they use top score writing and the blue bars are a year after using the program. So you can see that there's always tremendous growth. Most of the time we see about 70% growth um, in writing scores for those schools that use the program with Fidelity. So it truly is not only easy, but it works. Um, this is more data from this past school year, um, which was 2020 and 2021. So as you can see, these schools tested some sort of diagnostic or countywide assessment in August, then again in January, and then again in August, uh, April. So we work with schools that are uh, your, your general classrooms, your gifted and high achieving classrooms, your ESC, ELL. Um, it does not matter what level the students are, all the tools and resources I'm about to show you will work with all levels of students. Um, even my high achieving students, my gifted students, a lot of them were never taught the structure of writing an essay. And you'll hear me talk a lot about essay writing, but that just turns into what they need for high school and college, which is, which is research paper writing, which is again, structured writing. And then when they move into a job, constructing emails and different papers for different assignments on the job, that again is structured writing. So it's all a life skill that they will continually learn over time. So here's the deal with writing. I can pretty much ask 100 kids and 99 of them will tell me, they hate writing and they think it's hard. And I kind of like when I hear that because I like to prove them wrong because it's really not that it's hard and they shouldn't hate it. It's really only that they need to be taught how to put it all together. See, they have all these ideas. Kids can tell you all day long everything they want to write down, but they just don't know how to get those ideas to paper. And see, that's where I like to teach kids the parts. I call it the parts or the pieces of putting together structured writing, okay, which is an essay or research paper. So we really want to take everything that's here and help them to get it on paper in an organized and structured way that makes sense. If you've ever asked kids to journal and you say, write about what you did this weekend, they'll just write you a blurb that's all together and probably half a page. 
that's not organized structured writing. We want kids to learn how to put it out there on paper in an organized way. Tell me what you did in the beginning of the weekend, what you did in the middle, how it ended. There's got to be some sort of structure to the writing so it makes sense to them and the reader. So looking at the screen, if you're just looking on the left side, I want you to look at that planning outline, okay? Now this is for, let's say that you read a couple passages on alligators and the prompt told you to write an informative essay about alligators. I teach the students how to do an ITC outline, okay? This is a simple outline that'll help you plan out your essay. I tell every kid I ever teach and every teacher to tell their students they must plan. They can't tell you it's in their head. They can't tell you they've memorized it. They have to plan because their ideas on their planning will then turn into their full essay. Without their planning, which is their roadmap, they're not gonna write their essay or at least write it as good as it should be. So you can see on the left side in that, that box, the planning, the I and the C both say alligators because the topic of both passages was alligators. Then they had to go find three topics from the passages about alligators. So they found the topic of species, type of reptile and habitats. And then for each of their topics, they found two examples or details, that's their A and B. Now, if you're just looking at colors, I want you to see how the planning turns into the essay. You can see that the I, which stands for introduction, alligators, turns into the yellow paragraph where you introduce in your introduction the topic of alligators. Then everything highlighted in blue is your topic one paragraph. So all in the blue paragraph on the right hand side, it's all about the different species of alligators and it talks about the American alligator, which is my A, and the Chinese alligator, which is my B. And you can see everything in green on the outline turns into my second middle paragraph. And my second middle paragraph is all about that they are a type of reptile. And my A, I'm talking about how they're cold blooded and my B about the eggs. And then everything that is highlighted in pink on the outline has turned into the pink paragraph, which is the third middle paragraph on the essay. And then again, the outline, what's highlighted in gray for C, turned into the gray paragraph on the essay. So the whole point of this slide is to show you that the planning outline turns into the essay. So no one can say, the kids don't say, I don't know what to write in my first middle paragraph. Yes, you do, look at your outline. You're gonna write about species, and then you're gonna talk about the American alligator and the Chinese alligator. They now know exactly what goes in every single paragraph. So this is the informative outline. It's called an ITC outline. I stands for introduction, T stand, T1 stands for topic one, then topic two, topic three, and your C stands for conclusion. Okay, and your A's and B's are next to your topics. So whenever you're having your kids plan, make sure they always have an A and B next to their first topic, an A and B next to their second topic, and an A and B next to their third topic. Those are the details or examples. That's how they're going to expand in their paragraph. When you look back here, you see these are big middle paragraphs. They're only going to write one sentence about the actual topic of species, but then they're going to write about the American species and the Chinese species. So their A and B help them to expand in their paragraphs and elaborate and tell more. Again, tell them that their planning is their roadmap. Okay, so this is an ITC outline. Now, another thing I always like to show teachers is that each, each grade should progress to the next level, meaning that writing should not change every year. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I've worked with thousands of schools. Most of the time before I get into the school, this is what happens. The second grade teacher teaches writing this way. Then the kid goes to third grade, and it's literally like pushing restart. Okay, the third grade teacher teaches it completely different. She teaches four paragraphs instead of five. She calls the introduction something different. She teaches a whole different way of doing middle paragraphs. And then they go to fourth grade and they push restart again. And that teacher teaches a whole different way and calls something different. It should not be restarting every year. It should be growing every year. Okay, it should progress as they go from grade to grade. They should just become a better writer. They shouldn't really be learning anything new. The structure never changes. They should be becoming a better writer. So you can see that the planning, what we use in our first and second grade is your basic planning where we don't have those A's and B's. You're just working on those big topics. And then once you go from third grade to 12th grade, then you're gonna add those A's and B's for more support. Okay, so you always wanna have kind of a starting point and then just keep building. I always say that writing should, it should build from year to year. 
So when we're starting out with that building each essay one piece at a time, I always start with box paper. So you can see on the screen, this is something that you can easily create. We have it in all of our curriculum. Kids need to learn how to organize and they don't really see the parts of the essay at first. So when I'm first teaching it, I will have them write each part in its own box. So they know, okay, going back to like this planning here, when they get to their T1, which is in blue on species, and then the American alligator and Chinese alligator, when they get to this box paper T1, they're only gonna write about the different species of alligators and the American and Chinese in that box, because they know only what is on that T1 and that outline goes in the T1 box. This box paper makes all the difference in the world. Now, of course, they don't stick with this all year, but this is the beginning stages of writing. They'll start organizing it in the box paper, and then you'll take away the box paper. You use regular line paper, and they'll indent and use transition words and things like that. So this is just the beginning. Again, it's that progression year to year and helping them become a better writer over time. So if your kids are having trouble with organizing and you just have one big blob of writing all together and they're not organizing it or separating their paragraphs, try box paper, have them write the different paragraphs in its own box so that they can clearly see the separation and then slowly transition away from that. So I'm gonna go through each paragraph and just tell you real quick how I teach those, the structure, you're welcome to take notes and then I'll wrap up with some uh, resources and tools at the end. So with introduction paragraph, which is also known as the I paragraph, I teach three parts, okay? You have your hook, your three reasons and your closing statement. Now, of course, you can have more. You can set it up completely different. It's totally up to you. This is one way of how to set it up. So hook, three reasons, closing statement. You can see in that little circle on the left side, I have the three parts in different colors. Then the paragraph to your right, I have the same color. So my hook is in pink. My three reasons are in blue. That's where I name my three reasons. And then my closing statement is in green. Okay, so you can see how I'm always color coding. Color coding will make a huge difference as you're teaching the parts of an essay so kids can visually see it. Okay, when you teach hook, then state your three reasons and closing statement, and then you write it in the same colors, now the kids can see, oh, now I see the part. She has her hook in pink. She stated her three reasons in blue, and then her closing in green. You can see I used a simple question for my hook. I stated my three reasons, which again are my T1, T2, and T3, which are from that planning outline that we just did in the earlier screen. And then I leave it, leave them with a closing. This is a simple structure for the beginning stages of writing that works. Going into the middle paragraphs, okay? Again, it's all about structure. Kids need structure. They start with one structure, and then as they grow as writers, they will start and expand and become their own writers but they need a starting point. I always compare it to riding a bike, okay? You don't jump on a bike and start doing all these fancy tricks and flying in the air, okay? You start with training wheels, then you ride your bike without training wheels, normal on a straight path, and then as you get better, you can start doing tricks. Same thing with riding. We've got to give them some training wheels, a starting point, a simple structure, so then they can expand and become their own type of writer and kind of go with their own thinking and, and thoughts and things like that. But we wanna make sure we give them that structure in the beginning. So middle paragraphs. On the left side, I just want you to look at where it says T1 species in pink. And then it has American in blue and Chinese and green. We're just looking at an example T1 paragraph on the right. I just want you looking at colors right now. As you can see on, in that paragraph on the right, my first sentence is in pink. That's my topic sentence where I said that there, there are two different species of alligators in the world. Remember, if you look back on the outline on the left side of the screen, T1 species is in pink. I took that, that's my topic one, and I made my topic sentence in pink, which says first, there are two different species of alligators in the world. Okay, then look at the left side again where it says American in blue. Then I wrote three to four sentences about the American alligator in blue. And then look at the outline again where it says Chinese in green. Look at the paragraph. I did three to four sentences about the Chinese alligator in green. And then my last sentence is in purple. That's my wrap up. So what I teach the students is in every paragraph, you should have a topic sentence. You have to write a minimum of three to four sentences about your A, which is your first supporting detail. 
and a minimum of three to four sentences about your B, which is your second supporting detail, and then you end with a wrap up. So if you're just looking at colors on the right side of your screen in that paragraph, my topic sentences in pink, my A sentences are in blue, my B sentences are in green, and my wrap up is in purple. This is very easy for kids to learn and pick up on. And before you know it, they're writing these eight to 10 cent paragraphs because now they have a structure and they have an outline to follow. Once they've done that planning outline, they know exactly what's going in each paragraph. They won't be able to say to you anymore, I don't know how to, I don't know what else to write about. I don't know how to make the paragraph longer. Well, you've got to write at least three to four sentences about your A and three to four sentences about your B. Now, if I was going to do my T2, okay, if you're looking at the planning on the left side, my T2 says type of reptile. I would do my topic sentence saying that alligators are a type of reptile. And then I'd write three to four sentences about my A, which is them being cold blooded. And then I'd write three to four sentences about how they lay eggs. That's my, that's my B. And then I have a wrap up. That's my paragraph. Same thing, I go to T3. I would do my topic sentence about they live in many different habitats. Then look at the A, it's freshwater. I'd write three to four sentences about how they live in freshwater. And my B is holes. I'd write three to four sentences, minimum, I could do five or six, but minimum about how they create these holes. And I had to wrap up. So my entire essay, each paragraph is built in that planning outline. So I keep talking about structure, 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 because that's our starting point. So if you're looking at this full essay that's done on the screen, okay, just look at the colors again. Okay, I'm all about color coding. I promise you, your kids will pick up things like that with color coding. And we're just looking at the middle paragraphs. Every time you see my red sentence, that's a topic sentence. When you see green, those are my A sentences, my first supporting details. When you see blue, those are my B sentences, my second supporting details. And then the purple is my wrap up. I have that for each middle paragraph. Again, it all comes from that planning outline on the left side of your screen. I am simply following that. That is my roadmap. It tells you what to write about in every single paragraph. And that's how you get kids from writing one or two sentences to eight to 10 per middle paragraph because you've given them the outline and the structure to follow. Everything I'm going over with you is research-based instructional strategies, okay? I, I am one to say that I go back to basics because I know what works. And for any kid, for anything in life, repetition and practice is what works, okay? We know that. We know that with every subject, every sport. It takes doing it over and over again in practice. So the way that I teach writing is not that we start on Monday and we start working on a full essay. No, 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 no. We start with skills and we practice, 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 practice till we get that skill. So planning, for example, we'll work on planning for four or five days over and over and plan and read and plan all different prompts until they get that skill of planning. Then we'll go to introduction paragraph and we'll do nothing but write introduction paragraphs for four or five days. And then we'll go to topic sentences and do nothing but do topic sentences for four or five days. So it's this constant repetition and practice on these skills and then we put it all together. Okay, and it works because we're not overwhelming them with an entire essay within a week. We're working on little skills and then you put it all together. And by the time you put it together, they've got it because we've done the repetition of practice over and over and over again. The other strategy that I'm obsessed with and swear it works is by modeling with good examples and non-examples. You gotta show them the bad too. I feel like a lot of teachers are always showing the good examples. Here's how you do it. Here's what it should look like. We have to show the non-example. And if you look at the right side of the screen, you can see I give a non-example and an example of a topic sentence. Example A is the non-example, okay? It's too short. It doesn't tell about the topic of the essay. It just says first their species. But my example B is my good example because I'm showing that I said, First, there are, two different diff there are two different species of alligators because alligators is my topic. I want to make sure I put my topic in that sentence. Okay, so again, showing examples and non-examples. Every single lesson in the curriculum, we're talking about examples, has examples and non-examples because some of your kids, more than you think, will probably relate more to the non-example and then they'll finally dawn on them of, oh, so I can't do it that way. Now I see because it, they're not relating with the example. So if they can see that what they're doing is wrong, then they'll see what the good looks like and how to do it. So make sure you always model with examples 
and not examples. Okay, so again, that scaffolding, okay, making sure students have their starting point, you just keep building. So start by teaching structure, which I've gone over in the last three or four slides with you. We remember I was telling you with the middle paragraphs, you want to have a topic sentence, you want to write about those A sentences, those B sentences, and then the wrap up. I say three to four A, that means I need a minimum of three to four sentences about their A. And then I need a minimum of three to four cents about their B. That's just how I write it so it's easier. But as you keep building and they keep growing throughout the year, then that structure, the structure stays the same, but now we add elaborate techniques. Now we add quotes, paraphrases, and own thoughts and ideas. So those A and B sentences become a variety of elaborate techniques. But if you see with on the right side of the screen, that square, we still have the same structure. We're still teaching topic sentence, then your A sentences, then your B sentences, and your wrap up. We're just building and now we're adding more because you should be advancing and maturing as you move along in the writing over the years. So we move from that simple structure to adding those elaborative techniques. So those A and B sentences now become a combination of quotes from the text that they read, paraphrasing from the text that they read, and then some of their own thoughts and ideas. I always relate it to think of a research paper that you wrote in college. Yes, you quoted things, you paraphrased things, but you had to put your own thoughts and ideas in there. They have to do that as well. They cannot just take everything from the text. They have to show their own understanding and putting their own thoughts, ideas, and views in their essays or their research papers, whatever they're working on. So if we're working on elaborative techniques, okay, I still color code. I'm telling you, if, if you walk with anything, just start color coding with writing. <laughs> You'll make all the difference in the world. Okay, this is different how I color coded this. Now, just looking at colors, once again, okay, anytime you see blue is where I quoted from the text. Anytime you see green is where I paraphrased from the text. And anytime you see pink is where I put my own thoughts and ideas. Okay, so again, blue is where I quoted from the text, green is where I paraphrase from the text, and pink is where I put my own thoughts and ideas. I color code because number one, I want the kids to make sure they have all the elaborate techniques, but I also want them to see a nice balance. I want them to look back at their papers and go, oh yeah, I have a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, a little bit of pink. That's the way it should be. I don't want them to have a whole bunch of blue because that's all quoting and then a little bit of pink. Okay, quoting is easy, it's just copying. So we wanna make sure that they're adding elaborate techniques with a nice balance. So a little bit about top score writing. If you're not aware right now, you can use all of our online lessons, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, completely for free from now until July 1st. So if you haven't taken advantage of that, definitely take advantage of it. We have second through 12th grade curriculum, day-to-day -day lessons. When I tell you my story when I first started teaching and I couldn't find anything, I literally made day to day, day one, day two, day three, every lesson. With every lesson, there's modeling, guided practice, independent practice, quizzes, tests, okay? Behind every lesson are the activities that go with the lesson, okay? If there's homework, there's homework there. If there's a quiz, there's a quiz there. Everything you need, you don't have to do anything else besides turn the page, is there for you. We also teach expository, informative, opinion argumentative, and narrative. Okay, every single thing that you need. Um, if you haven't seen our kits before, if you look at the, the top, that's our second grade kit. You get three books, section one and two, section three, four, five, and then you get a whole book of passages. By the way, if I didn't mention, our passages are already paired for you. They're Lexiled by Metametrics, which is Lexile.com, which means they already have the Lexile, which means they're certified to be on grade level. And they already have a prompt written to them and you're getting over 100. So you don't ever have to go find text again for informative or opinion. It's already there for you paired with prompts. Okay, you can see the orange books. Those are our third grade kits. You get four books for third grade, section one and two in the first book, three and four in the second book, five and six in the third, and then that whole book of passages again. Every grade level gets its own book of passages. Here's our fourth and fifth grade curriculum. Both of them have four books, again, sections one through five with a whole book of passages. And then our middle school curriculum, we have sixth, seventh, and eighth. 
Those have three books. Again, they each get their whole book of passages. Those passages are on grade level and certified for that grade level and have that Lexile measure by Lexile.com. We have partnered with them. So every one of our passages gets certified and Lexiled by Metametrics, which is Lexile.com. And we have um, our lesson plans. I'm just showing you like a, a screenshot here. If you look at starting with the left, that's the beginning of the lesson. I have step-by-step -step instructions. You can read them like a script or you can make them your own. I tell you exactly what passages you'll need. You see that box on the first page? I'm telling you, you need those two passages for that lesson. Those passages are in the passage book and they already have a prompt. Um, there's lots of examples already done for you. So when you have to teach it and write the example on the board, it's already done for you in the book. Just write what's, what's in the book. And there's lots of think aloud, discussion topics, examples provided, guided practice, independent practice, all that's there. You can see in this particular lesson that I'm showing you examples of, there's model and work together. There's guided practice and there's independent practice. Okay, these are all different worksheet activities that are already in the lessons. Okay, behind, just as you're flipping behind the lessons are the activities, quizzes, things like that. And on top of that, there's like a million practice tests. So you really don't have to go searching for anything else the entire school year. Our assessments, you can see there's quizzes, but there's also full writing tests. The prompt is done. The passages are done. You get the paper, the planning sheet, everything, all right there for you to give tests. Because the thing about writing, it's not like a math test. You just can't ask 10 simple multiple choice questions. The only way to know if they got it or what they need to work on is they got to write. So we do have those practice tests built in so you can have those scheduled times where you're able to see what they need work on. There's also editing opportunities and lessons, revising opportunities and conferencing. It's all built in every single section. Okay, there's a checklist for every genre, every grade level, you're gonna get a checklist. There's checklist activities for students to do on their own. And in the middle, you can see there's checklist activities for them to do with a partner. There's also many times where there's conferencing and revising lessons, all built in there for you. We do a lot of the growth mindset development. We have the self-assessment pieces. We have the revision pieces, the reflection pieces. We think it's important that kids always take time to reflect at the end of the lessons, just to make a note of what they did well on, what they wanna work on, things like that. And I have all of your standards are all mapped out and aligned for you. Okay, so if you're in Florida, I have your Florida standards correlation charts. If you're get, moving into best standards, I have best standards for you. Everything's aligned to your standards. And this goes for any state, by the way, we're aligned to almost every state standards. And then your pacing guides, which are your lesson plans. I have your lesson planning for writing done for next school year. For 2021, 2022, your lesson planning is done. I've mapped it all out for you. I tell you exactly what to do each week, tells you this week what lessons and you're done. So when it comes to preparing for next year for writing, I've done that for you. If you have not received the pacing guides, please reach out to me at the end of this. I will give you my contact information. I'll be happy to send you the pacing guides for your grade level so you can just check off lesson planning for next school year. There's one thing I want to leave you with, which is probably the most exciting part of all of this, is our new digital. Um, our digital in the past has been great, and we've had animated lessons by cartoon characters, um, but things just got better. We now have teacher-led lessons which means myself or one of my team members is teaching the whole lesson live to your class or your student. So you can literally push play and we can teach the writing lesson. Now, you may think, well, you know, I can't really do that. I could get in trouble or I should be teaching. Here's the thing, think about it this way because even my best teachers do this. If you could put the lesson up on your, your screen in your room and push play and let me or one of my team members do the teaching, you could then be out in the classroom working with students. It's almost like having a team teaching situation. It's like the best of both worlds because you know you're getting quality instruction because it's myself or a certified trainer and you now get to go out and work with the students and, and go up to them as the person's teaching. Could you get that? Make sure you do this. You're able to work with them because usually we're just up at the front. We don't get a chance to do that. But now you get to be out there with the students actually seeing if they got it, they're doing it right, what they need help on while a teacher is teaching it. So you can use it that way. 
You can use it if you're going to be out. Most time, if the sub comes, we have to leave work, let them play the lesson. Um, if you're going to, anyone's going to be out from maternity leave for an extended period of time, your, your kids do not need to miss the writing lesson. Have them log on and push play. You're also going to get the PowerPoint for every lesson. So if you want to teach the lesson, but you want to have that PowerPoint up there to guide you, you can just use the PowerPoint. You can teach the lesson. You get the PDF of every lesson, the PDF of every worksheet, the PDF of every passage. You can download and print. And we also have the lessons where cartoon characters teach them. So you have every possible differentiation strategy in our digital license that you could possibly need to hit every kid's needs. Because some kids just need a different face, different voice. Some kids only learn from cartoons. <laughs> some kids like colorful PowerPoints. Some kids just want to do the lesson on their own and use the PDF. There are so many different ways you can differentiate instruction with our one digital license. So I am going to show you this now. I have it pulled up here. When you log on to our digital platform, you'll have your whichever grade level demo you signed up for because we do have our free lessons right now. So I'm going to show you fourth grade. Now with fourth grade, when you go in, I want you to see here that you have your animated lesson, your teacher led lesson, your PowerPoint, your lesson plan, and the student activity sheets, all there for you for the lesson. So I'm just gonna show you real quick. The animated lesson looks like this with cartoon characters teaching it, okay? The only thing you have to do with this one is you still have to be interactive with it, which means you're going to have to be up at the front. You're going to have to push the continue. See, to move on, I have to push continue. Okay, so just make sure if you're doing the animated version, you are able to go by your computer or your clicker to keep it moving along. Oops, I went too far back. All right, if you want to do the teacher led, this is where we've taught it. So all you have to do is long on and push play. You literally push play and the whole lesson teaches for you through the whole thing. I'm just gonna skip through so you can see it. So you can take the right structure. So you can push play and we'll do the teaching with the teacher led lesson. We even give time for them to do their activity. We tell them to pause the video. We go over the examples. We have reflection time, rev revising time, all of that. Okay, so that's our teacher led lesson. And then maybe you just want to use the PowerPoint and you want to teach, that's fine. You have the PowerPoint here as well. Okay, the whole PowerPoint from that lesson is here for you. Or if you just want to simply print the actual lesson plan, here's the lesson plan. There it is, the whole lesson plan, everything's there that you need. And if you wanted just to print the student activity sheets that go with that lesson, you could go here. Now, everything is downloadable and printable, okay? This kind of think of this part as your viewing section, but if you do want to download or print, all you have to do is go to the bottom where it says PDF. Okay, so you can see right here the, that you can print the lesson. So you would just click on the PDF, download the PDF and print it. But everything you need for all the lessons is right in your digital license. We do have print books as well, okay, if you want, the, a lot of schools do our, our combo because we're teachers. We like books in our hand that we can make notes and sticky notes. So you can do the combo where you get the print book and the digital license, or you can just do the print or just do the digital. But the digital has so much to offer this next year um, that can work with all of your kids. Okay, let me go back to my PowerPoint. I can finish up with you all. Okay. So that ends, there we go. That ends today's webinar. I wanted to keep it uh, short and sweet for you because um, I am aware of your time. I appreciate you taking the time to come to today's webinar. Hopefully you walked away with some tools and resources that you can use in the classroom, um, especially with setting up all the paragraphs. I went through all of those, the structure, you can use all of those with any genre of writing. Um, this is our phone number and email. But if you want those free lessons, access to what I just showed you, the demo, all you have to do is go to topscorestore.com. You can see the website right on this slide. 
www.topscorestore.com. When you go there, just go down to where it says demo and click on your grade level. And you'll have access to all those lessons from now until July 1st. Okay, so if you're still in school, I take advantage and just push play and use those. Um, if you're not in school but want to take a look at them and share them with your team members, go ahead and do that. You have free access to all of that that I just showed you with the digital from now until July 1st. So thank you again for attending today. If you have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat pod. I will stay on to answer them. And then after, if you think of anything, you uh, more than you can um, email or call us anytime. We're more than happy to help you out anytime that you need. And if you don't already follow us on social media, I highly suggest that only because we always put out videos and tons of free resources. I mean, tons and tons and tons. Um, so on Instagram or Facebook, you can follow us at Top Score Writing. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day.